Ancient Egypt is celebrated as one of the most iconic civilizations in Africa, but Africa is rich in a diverse tapestry of culture and kingdoms that have equally fascinating stories and achievements. So here are six amazing African kingdoms that are just as remarkable as ancient Egypt. But make sure you subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends. If you're a history lover like myself, visit my website at africanboo.com to learn more about African history. I take my time and research before I post there. So go there and learn more about African history. Thank you. At number six on our list is the Kingdom of Congo. The Kingdom of Congo was in the west central part of Africa, mostly in what is now the DRC, Angola, part of Gabon and the Republic of Congo. It started in the 1400s and did well until the end of the 1800s. The king, known as the Mani Congo, was in charge of both the government and the spiritual aspects of the kingdom. Below the king, there were leaders in different regions, chiefs and a complex system for running the government. Its location along the Atlantic coast provided it with a strategic advantage for engaging in trade with European powers, particularly the Portuguese. Copper, ivory and agricultural goods were just some of the many natural resources in the area. The kingdom had a lot of old traditions, music, dance and religious activities that made up their rich cultural heritage. Internal wars, the Atlantic slave trade, and the spread of European colonization in Africa all made the fall of Congo faster. Even though the Kingdom of Congo fell apart and lost its power, parts of Congo's culture are still influencing various ethnic groups in the area. Number 5 on our list is Great Zimbabwe. The name Zimbabwe simply means stone houses. This is clear from their beautiful art, poetry, and other items that have been found in Great Zimbabwe. These valuable relics show how important culture was to the kingdom and give a glimpse into the many different parts of daily life and religious views. Between the 11th and 15th centuries, the kingdom thrived remarkably. It was one of the most powerful kingdoms of its time. Its amazing stone buildings, like huge walls and complex structures, show that the society was technically advanced and had a complex social structure. There were different parts of the city, such as a center hilltop, which was home for the wealthy, a middle town, and a valley where the common people lived. This setup tells us that there were rulers, craftspeople, traders and farmers in a complex society. The prosperity of Great Zimbabwe was intricately linked to its strategical location along trade routes that bridged the Indian Ocean with the heart of Southern Africa. The kingdom traded with faraway places such as the Arab world and the Swahili coast, trading valuable goods like gold and ivory. This trade network not only brought wealth to the area, but also helped people from other countries to share their ideas and learn more about each other. Historians still argue about the events that led to the fall of Great Zimbabwe. Changes in the surroundings, the economy, and the way the country was ruled may have played a big part. By the end of the 15th century, most of the people who lived in the kingdom had already left. Still, Great Zimbabwe's influence lives on, as seen in the ruins of the city and in the way people of modern-day Zimbabwe see themselves. At number 4 on our list is the Kingdom of Ife. The Kingdom of Ife, located in what is now southwestern Nigeria, is renowned for its exceptional bronze and terracotta sculptures dating back to the 12th and 15th centuries. These artistic masterpieces reflect the kingdom's advanced mythological skills and provide insight into its rich cultural and spiritual beliefs. The kingdom had cities with well-designed streets, plazas, and open areas. The architecture of the city, which included earthen walls, courtyards, and compounds, showed that it was a complicated society with different social classes. The exact reason for Efe's fall are still unknown, but trade route changes and the rise of other Yoruba kingdoms may have played a big role. In the 1500s, the kingdom was no longer the most important government center. Still, its influence lives on in Yoruba society and the art world as a whole. Ife's art continues to shape modern African art, and statues from Ife can be seen in museums all over the world. Archaeological digs in Ife had uncovered a treasure trove of items, including sculptures, terracotta figurines, pottery, and pieces of buildings. These findings tell us a lot about their culture, religion, and daily life of the Ife civilization that we didn't know before. 
The Yoruba people are descendants of the Ife civilization and they still keep many of their ancestors' cultural and religious customs. In Yoruba religion and mythology, Ife is still a holy place. At number three on our list is the Mali Empire. From the 13th to the 16th centuries, the Mali Empire thrived in West Africa. It covered a large area that is now Mali, Senegal, Mauritania, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Niger, and parts of Burkina Faso and Chad. The Mansas who ruled Mali embodied the country's wealth and power. Masa Musa is known as one of the richest people in history. This is because when he went on a pilgrimage to Mecca, he gave away a lot of gold along the way. This huge act of giving away money made a lasting impression on the world and brought attention to Mali's huge wealth. The Mali Empire became an important trade hub between North Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa because of its position along the Trans-Saharan trade lines. Mali's strong gold production and trade helped the kingdom to build up a lot of wealth and solidify its position as a major player in the world economy. Timbuktu was known as a center of learning, culture, and trade, attracting teachers, poets, and merchants from all over the Muslim world. The Mali Empire left a bright architectural history. A great example is the Great Mosque of Jenny, which is on the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. It's a great example of African architecture and shows how committed the kingdom was to Islam. Oral tradition, epic tales like the epic of San Dieta and the ability of Muslim and indigenous beliefs to coexist peacefully are all factors that preserved Mali's cultural history. The empire had to deal with fighting within itself, attacks from outside, and the rise of other West African states. By the end of the 16th century, it was not as important as it used to be. Even so, its past and culture lives on in Mali today, where they continue to shape the country's identity. At number two on our list is the Kingdom of Axum. The Kingdom of Axum, located in present-day Ethiopia and Eritrea, thrived from the 1st to the 7th century CE. It was one of the world's first Christian kingdoms and had a thriving trade network with distant lands, including the Roman Empire and India. The kingdom is also known for its remarkable obelisk, some of which still stand today. These stilis were used for many different things, like remembering rulers and marking holy events. The obelisk of Axum, being the tallest one still standing at over 24 meters, demonstrate the kingdom's impressive stone carving skills. Gyes, or Ethiopian writing, which was made in Axum, is mostly used for religious texts and inscriptions. This script made a big difference in keeping historical records and religious texts safe. Changes in trade routes, invasion, and the rise of Islam in the region were just a few of the factors that contributed to the kingdom's decline. By the 7th century CE, Axum's power had decreased and it began to lose its ground. Still, its history lives on in Ethiopia and Eritrea today, especially in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church and the cultural history in the area. Axum is full of archaeological treasures. Excavations have uncovered not only the famous obelisk, but also old tombs, royal buildings, and artifacts that show how the kingdom's history and culture are complex. Number one on our list is the Kingdom of Kush. Located in Nubia, to the south of ancient Egypt, the Kingdom of Kush existed from around 1070 BC to 350 AD. Kush's past was intertwined with that of ancient Egypt. There were times when ancient Egypt was in charge and times when Kush was strong and independent. In the 8th century BC, the Kushite rulers, who would later be known as the 25th dynasty, attacked Egypt and took control. Kushite rulers ruled from the city of Napata, which is in modern-day Sudan. Like the Egyptian neighbors, the Kushites built buildings that have lasted for ages. This includes pyramids, churches, and tombs for kings and queens. In particular, Nubian pyramids had a different style than Egyptian pyramids. They had narrower bottoms and sharper angles. Kush was a trade hub because of its good sports along the Nile. It controlled valuable resources like gold, ivory, ebony, and other items from the interior of Africa, which basically indicate that it had trade lines to Egypt, the Mediterranean, and parts of Africa. The Kushites had a faith that was a mixture of their own beliefs and Egyptian ones. Temples and statues of their gods and goddesses have been found at different archaeological sites. 
changes in trade routes, a diminishing Egyptian presence in the region, and the pressure from other cultures were just a few of the factors that contributed to Kush's fall. By the 4th century AD, Kush had mostly given up its position as the most powerful nation. Still, its impact lives on in archaeological sites and artifacts that are still being found in Sudan today. These six kingdoms showcase the incredible diversity and historical significance of African civilizations. They make significant contributions to architecture, arts, religion, and trade, demonstrating that Africa's history is a treasure trove of accomplishments that deserve recognition along the ancient wonders of ancient Egypt. If there is any other kingdom I left out, can you let me know in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video and see you next time.